mañana vengo a las 4 de la mañana, me levanto, 4 y media y poncho mi tarjeta. Me voy a traer un grupo que está en el fil grande ahí arriba. Entro eso, acaban de dar agua, doy leche y doy mamilita a los chiquitos, me cuesta más. Gana started in the spring of 2014, Selena and Andrea, and they said, John, don't you realize that there's a burgeoning Latino community in this area and there's no need to keep tripping down to the border in order to study it, analyze it? Since I moved here 13 years ago, has gone from about three people to potentially 250, although no one is certain of the exact figure. These people work extremely long hours, 90 to 95 hours a week, for relatively little pay on dairy farms. Without transportation, so they don't even speak, even speak to each other most of the time. There's a group of older students or previous Ganas members and the new students who are taking the course for the first time this term. So I've tried to make it as student controlled as possible because this started, the genesis was student control. Even in the tutorial or individual tutorial, group tutorial, they told me exactly which projects they wanted to be involved in, and I tried to execute those with them. Uh, this semester I'm working on uh, ESL, that's my main focus, um, getting English classes started for uh, Spanish-speaking members of the community who want to improve or learn English for the first time. Going to be a challenge to, in terms of continuity for our students, and I would like to uh, maybe see the English classes run on a semester basis sometime in the future instead of week by week. Um, and also potentially considering other ways to incentivize people to come to class on a weekly basis and to kind of just get involved uh, with Ghanas as an organization. So at the beginning of every class there are announcements, what we've done the previous week, what we're intending to do the following week, who's visiting which farms, which migrant communities, exactly what they'll be doing with those communities, whether it's the Bennington Free Clinic or more of an ad hoc visit. Uh, we then discuss at least one reading every week together. It's a lot of responsibility, a lot of accountability on the part of the student to conduct themselves accordingly. Coming as a freshman, I noticed the lack of people like me. And when I found out that there was a migrant population out there, I thought it would be really interesting to connect with them and hear their stories and what they had to say. I heard about it first when it was a club and then when it became a tutorial, I joined. As a class, there's groups that are working on different projects and I translate text or videos during one of the social events that we had last year where people were so moved and just the fact that they could connect to other migrant workers in the area they didn't know existed. That moment made me feel like I was making a change in their lives because now they found a migrant worker who could be a friend, who could be a source of support. Resources we have, the more support we have in the community, and people are usually really interested in giving back. Maybe they just don't have a, a concrete way to do it. It was important for us to know about their struggles and about the things that they faced. Um, I know the struggles um, undocumented migrant workers face daily. Um, as a first generation student and a daughter of two migrant workers from Mexico, I see it all the time and I wanted to give back to a community that I didn't even know existed here at Bennington. Ganas is not only just a group of students making connections with migrant workers here in Bennington, it's a resource for these families. Emotional support, social support, and without it um, I can imagine that the community here would be very vulnerable and alone. We believe that Ghana's will continue as long as Bennington stands. Basically, we hope that, you know, after 
every class graduates, people will keep joining Ganas. I don't think a lot of students here would have known about how many like undocumented migrant workers are in Bennington. I mean, people know that there's a lot of undocumented migrant workers in California or in Arizona, in New Mexico, but Vermont being so far off on the East Coast and they need resources and without them, they would struggle so much, especially with the language barrier today. Like in San Francisco, Spanish is just a well-known language and coming here to Vermont, no one really spoke Spanish unless it was Spanish class, so. And when it was a club, I wasn't a part of the club. I had um, friends who were, and so I taken a lot of the events that they had and got more interested, and whenever I heard it was becoming a class, I wanted to join, start this uh, high school counseling program that I had in mind. Um, I come from the KIPP school, which is a school started in Houston. Now it's in lots of major cities across the country. It focuses on uh, helping students from low-income communities uh, get a quality education. Coming from that kind of high school, I figured that I can offer migrant families around the area offer them the opportunity to actually get into college. My project uh, is about reaching out to the Bennington Police Department, which uh, there isn't a lot of publicly available information on, especially regarding statistics with um, the police department is a group of people that has a huge amount of influence on the lives of migrant workers. And I think that whatever biases, implicit or explicit, that police officers might hold is extremely relevant to the job that they're doing and needs to be addressed in a manner that is accessible to the general public. I thought that it would be, I don't speak Spanish very well, so I thought that it would be kind of difficult for me to um, work on a project that would be more closely involved um, with the Latino community. So I decided to go sort of the behind the scenes route. Um, so that to me that means more um, media communication and outreach. So I redesigned the website, um, made it so that it would be bilingual and accessible to all of the different audiences that um, Ganas Bay attract and I've been working with all the other projects to help them spread the word about what they're doing and um, getting in contact with larger organizations in the area. We always need help, but if you want to help you need to be uh, aware, sufficiently aware to maybe express ways of helping from the very beginning. And not just in the sense of, you know, it's obvious that these 16 students care about what they're doing and they're trying to be ethical, uh, and yet not so ethical that it prevents them from acting. How politically correct this country has become, or the national discourse has become, academic discourse has become. In the end, this is about moments of contact with a community that does actually require assistance.